Hello, hello, and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video. In today's video, I will be going over my Earth Machine deck. Now, this is what I would consider to be my quote-unquote good deck. Probably the best deck that I have ever actually built. If there is a game that I want to win, this is the deck I play. So I figured it would be a fitting deck to be my first profile of this year. Now, I have, of course, played this deck extensively on Master Duel. However, it was built according to the TCG ban list. Uh, so I kind of thought that if a deck like this could succeed on Master Duel, where certain cards that shall go unnamed are still legal, then it very likely would still be a force to be reckoned with outside of Master Duel. So in today's video, I will go over everything in this deck comprehensively. Uh, anybody, even if you know nothing about Earth Machines, would probably be able to play this deck quite well just after watching this video. So I will first go over the main deck, then the extra deck, and then I will go over a few of the combos that make this deck work. So, yes, without any further ado, let's get into this. Now, let's start with the Infinitrax. There's a good number of them in this deck, and they really do make things run well. And uh, at the top of the pile here, we have the Infinitrack Harvester, which I run at 3. And I run it at 3 because it is an extremely important card. It is probably the main starter in the entire deck. Now, it's at level 2, which is actually relevant. Uh, it has 0 attack, 2100 defense. When it is normal or special summoned, you can add any other Infinitrack monster from your deck to your hand. So this allows your combos to get going, but it has another effect too. Uh, you can target another machine monster, and then the levels of this monster and whatever you target, they become the sum of the two. So if you have a level 5 machine, you can target it with this. They both become level 7. 5 plus 2 is 7. And that just enables you to play some of the larger Excisey monsters in the deck more easily. So, yeah, this one is definitely a card that you can't do without. Now, we also have the Infinitrack Anchor Drill here. Uh, it's at level 4, and it's sort of a starter as well. You, you could start off your combos with this. I only have the one copy, though, because it is very easy to find. Uh, 1800 attack, 500 defense, and that is relevant for a card that we'll see later. Uh, when this card, however, is normal or special summoned, you can special summon another Earth Machine from your hand in defense position. So, like I said, you can start off your combos that way, uh, because this card also, similar to the Harvester, you can target another machine and add their levels up and they both become that new level. So, level 4, if you've got a level 5 out there, you can make them both level 9. And, again, go into some of your big Excisey monsters that way. And I, I say level 5 as my example a lot, because a lot of the other Infinitrax are all at level 5. Uh, like the Trencher! So these level 5 Infinitrax, they all have this effect at the beginning. You tribute an Earth Machine and special summon it from your hand in defense position. So these, these all do that. There's, I only have one of each of these, uh, these next few. But you can banish this one from your graveyard and uh, special summon another Infinitrax from your graveyard. So once you've used this for something else, then it still has work to do while in the graveyard to special summon other things and allow plays to continue. The Infinitrack Crab Crane, uh, another level 5, again you can special summon it, but what this one does is you can banish another machine from your graveyard and add an Outrigger extension from your deck to your hand. Uh, Outrigger extension is a spell card and we'll see that a bit more later. 
in Finitrack Tunneler, again, level 5. Uh, special summons itself, but you can also target a bunch of Earth Machine monsters, uh, five of them, banish this card from your graveyard, and shuffle those five other cards into your library and draw two cards. So if you've already used a bunch of your Earth Machines, you can use this to get a bit of draw power out of them. And just like the past uh, couple Infinitrax, it has 500 defense, uh, oh, well, actually, the, the Trencher had 500 attack, but whatever. As long as one of those numbers is 500, that is relevant to another card we will see later. And the Infinitrack Brutal Dozer. This is generally what you're going to get with your, uh, with your Harvester. Uh, because once you special summon it by tributing another Earth Machine, then you can search your library for another Infinitrack and just special summon it in defense position, but negate its effects. So this turns your Harvester into a level 5, and another level 5 that you special summon off of this one, and then you can go into your XIZ plays. So it's an extremely important combo piece, but keep in mind, this card, unlike all the others, prevents you from special summoning for the rest of the turn except Earth Machine Monsters. So this does lock you out of a couple of cards in the deck, but it is very, very worth it. Next up, we have a handful of Machina Monsters, because as uh, Earth Machines, the Machinas work really well with the Infinitrax. Now, I only run one of each of these, but you could get away with running more than one, especially of this Machina gear frame, uh, because when it is normal summoned, so it has to be normal summoned, then you can add another Machina monster from your deck to your hand, and that enables combos to happen. But it is also a Union monster, so you can equip it to your other machine-type monsters, or unequip it to turn Machina gear frame back into a monster, and believe it or not, that is something that's relevant. After that, we have the Machina Unclaspare, which is a dark machine, and uh, yeah, it's, it's not Earth, I know, but some things we just have to live with. If this card is added to your hand except by drawing it, such as by the gear frame, perhaps, then you can immediately special summon it, uh, and then it locks you out of summoning non-machine monsters, but there are no non-machines in this deck, so you know what, that's fine. Uh, but when this card is normal or special summoned, you send a Machina monster from your deck to the graveyard, and some of them want to be there. Uh, in fact, we're going to have a look at them right now. Machina Fortress is a level 7 machine. It is, uh, it is rather big. And the important thing about Machina Fortress, however, is not necessarily its attack power, but in how easy it is to special summon. Because you can discard machine-type monsters whose total levels are 8 or more to special summon this card from your hand or graveyard. And it's important to note that you can, in fact, discard Machina Fortress as, as part of its own effect to special summon itself from the graveyard. So as long as you have any other machines that you can discard to this, uh, you can discard them both and then special summon the fortress from your graveyard. It's, it's really easy to do, and again, it enables combos to happen. There's a lot of combos in this deck. Uh, but it's also not the worst card to end on either, because... Uh, uh, let's see, if it's destroyed by battle, you can destroy one card your opponent controls, and if it is uh, targeted by your opponent, then you can look at their hand and force them to discard something. So it's annoying in a number of ways. Uh, also note that this special summon is not once per turn. Again, extremely important. As long as you have enough levels of machines to discard, you can keep on bringing Machina Fortress back. And finally, we have the Machina Citadel, which is a massive level 10 with 3,000 attack. 
Uh, however, it can't be a normal summoner set and has to be special summoned by a card effect. So it doesn't do you a lot of good in your hand, although there are ways to special summon it from there too. Uh, but what this card does, which is kind of nasty really, as a quick effect, target a machine monster you control, you destroy it, and all monsters your opponent controls with less attack than that monster. So it is sort of a board wipe into and of itself, it can target itself, so if you make your Machina Citadel destroy itself, it'll take down anything with 3000 attack or less. So. I mean, hey, that is uh, that is a good thing to have as a quick effect. And uh, if a... Uh, see, it, it does something else too. Uh, except Machina Citadel, if a face-up Earth Machine monster you control, except Machina Citadel is destroyed by battle or card effect while it is in your graveyard, yeah, then it brings itself back. You can special summon this card. So, it's not a bad idea even if you can't get this into play, to at least have this sitting in your graveyard so that if something goes wrong, it'll come right back into play and then you can use its destruction effect and wreak all kinds of havoc. This next card doesn't really fit too cleanly into any other categories in this deck, so I'll just have it here on its own. This is the Ancient Gear Box, and when it is added, from your deck or graveyard to your hand, except by drawing it, you can add an Earth Machine monster with 500 attack or defense from your deck to your hand. So that is why it's relevant that all those Infinitrax have 500 attack or defense, because that allows them to be searched up by this. And uh, why do you want Ancient Gearbox? Well, it actually goes with another card in the extra deck that we will see later. And now we get into the big stuff. This is the Therion King Regulus, which is, again, one of the most important cards in this deck, and I run two of them for that reason. Uh, it is at level 8, which is relevant to some of the combos. It has 2800 attack, it's pretty big. But what it does is you can target a Therion monster or a machine monster in your graveyard. There, there are no other Therions in this deck, so it's only a machine in your graveyard, and special summon this card from your hand and equip the monster that you targeted to it. So it's an easy card to special summon, and once it's in play, when your opponent activates a card or effect as a quick effect, you can send a Therion monster card from your hand or face-up field to the graveyard to negate that effect. And a Therion monster equipped with this card gains 700 attack, and it can use that effect. Okay, that, that's not particularly relevant either, but the relevant part is that it can send itself, or if for some reason you have a Therion King equipped to a Therion King, you can send the other one as well uh, to the graveyard to negate something. So this is one of the few negations in the deck. It, it's something that the deck kind of struggles with, I will admit that. Uh, but the deck also doesn't really want to go first if it can avoid it. It is much better at breaking boards than it is at building them. Still, having a Therion King in play is a surefire way to help your other combos go off safely, and yeah, having, having two of them is a good idea just in case you can manage to equip one to the other. That, that is the dream. Finally, that brings us to the trains. Uh, we've got the Heavy Freight Train Derecrane here, and the Super Express Bullet Train. Yes, they are, uh, they are in the deck because they are level 10 monsters, Earth Machine monsters, that are easy to special summon. And level 10 is a big level, so it's uh, it, it's useful for what you want to end on eventually. Uh, the Heavy Freight Train here, if a Earth Machine Monster is normal or special summoned to your field, then you can special summon this card from your hand, but its attack and defense become halved, which is not particularly relevant. You're probably going to use this as material for something anyway. Mm, also, uh, speaking of which, once per turn, if this card is detached from an Excisey monster and sent to the graveyard to activate an effect, then you can target one card your opponent controls and destroy it. Uh, it is 
a surefire way to destroy something just by launching a train at it and yeah that's uh, something to keep in mind as you're building your boards. The uh, Super Express bullet train on the other hand special summons itself just if you have only earth machine monsters in play so it's very easy to special summon. Unfortunately though attacking with it is very very risky because you can't declare an attack with it unless you send two other cards you control to the graveyard. Now if you're certain you're going to win with that attack then it doesn't matter send to the graveyard whatever you want uh, otherwise uh, maybe you know hold off on attacking with this thing uh, but during the end phase though if this card is in your graveyard because it was sent there this turn you can target a machine monster in your graveyard and return it to your hand. So it does help you set up for future turns if, uh, you know, if there's going to be a future turn. This deck is really good at OTKing the opponent. And technically I do have three more monsters in this deck. I have three Ash Blossoms and Joyous Spring because it is generally a good card to have. It does a lot of things. It's at level 3, it's a tuner, but that doesn't matter because you aren't really going to be using this as a monster unless you really, really have no other choice. Uh, what it does, though, is when a card or effect is activated that includes any of the following effects, you can discard this card and negate that effect. So if your opponent is adding a card from deck to hand, or special summoning from the deck, or sending a card from the deck to the graveyard, you can discard your Ash Blossom and stop your opponent from doing that. Now, there are many, many, many cards out there, far too many in fact, that uh, allow people to add things from deck to hand, or do other things from the deck, so this is a good defense against that. Uh, just a kind of a catch-all negation effect that you can put in pretty much any deck out there. Which brings us to the spells and traps, and I'm going to start with my uh, machine-based spells and traps, because there's a lot of them, and they are pretty powerful effects in general. Uh, Machina Redeployment, this is another starter. Uh, that's why I have three of them. It is always a useful thing to have one of these in your opening hand. Uh, what it does is you discard a card and then add two Machina monsters with different names from your deck to your hand. Well, all four of my Machinas in this deck have different names, so you are adding two of them to your hand. Uh, picking up that gear frame and something else is typically a very good idea and it allows your combos to get rolling. Then after that we have a heavy forward, actually we have two of them. This is a continuous spell card that works with the Infinitrax. Uh, when it is activated you add an Infinitrax monster from your deck to your hand. So you can Use this to get a Harvester, or if you already have a Harvester, use this to get some other combo piece you might want. It, it's very useful, uh, but it has a secondary effect too, because it is a continuous spell after all. Uh, you can target one of your Excisee monsters and either change its battle position or attach this card to it as material. Uh, often your Heavy Forward will just sit in play and not do much, but those other options are there if you want to use them. And here we have Urgent Schedule, which again I run at 2. This card is really really good if you can get it to work. So if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, and remember you want to go second, so that is quite likely, then you can special summon a level 4 lower and a level 5 or higher Earth Machine from your deck. So this just puts them right into play. It does negate their effects, so uh, keep that in mind, but it searches for two of pretty much any Earth Machines that you would want, and it just gets things going in a ridiculous manner. If you can get an urgent schedule to resolve, you are not guaranteed to win, but you are in a very, very good position. Uh, also, if this set card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add a level 10 machine monster from your deck to your hand. 
so it does stuff even if it gets destroyed. Uh, this is a quick play spell, by the way, sometimes that's relevant. Uh, but yeah, Urgent Schedule is extremely powerful. And here we have the Therion Discoliseum. It is the one field spell in this entire deck. Uh, when it is activated, you add a Therion monster from your deck to your hand. So again, it searches for something. Uh, it's only ever going to get the Therion King. So this kind of acts as a third copy of Therion King, uh, but it does other things too. Um, what does it do? If your monster would be destroyed by battle, you can send a Therion card from your deck to the graveyard instead of having that monster get destroyed. And once per turn when a monster is destroyed by battle, you can target a Therion in your graveyard, add it to your hand. So it kind of recycles your Therion Kings as well, uh, but the important thing is it just gets a Therion King to your hand. And finally, we have the Outrigger Extension. Uh, this is the card that goes with the Anchor Drill, if you'll recall. And it's a very interesting effect. So for one thing, it stops your opponent from targeting your Machine Excisey monsters. So it is a good defensive card to have. It's a continuous spell, so it sticks around. And the main reason it's here, you can target an Infinitrack Excisey monster and special summon from the extra deck a machine monster that is two ranks higher than that target, using that target as material. So if you have a level 5 Infinitrack, a rank 5 rather, Infinitrack, you can use this to turn it into a rank 7. Or if you have a rank 9, you can turn it into a rank 11, right? Uh, always two ranks higher. So it turns your Excisey monsters into bigger Excisey monsters. Uh, and of course, you can use their effects and all that. It doesn't negate anything. So this is a useful card to have out there. Uh, sometimes, unfortunately, it's maybe a bit of a dead draw. Th this is kind of a pet card of mine, but it, it is still quite useful to have, and generally I'm quite happy to have this out, because again, it does stop your opponent from targeting your Machine Excisey monsters at the very least. Now, let's get into some disruptive staples. Uh, like I said, this deck wants to go second, and a card like Raigeki is perfect for that. Destroy all monsters your opponent controls, uh, and then they're no longer a problem. Also, Harpy's Feather Duster. Destroy all spells and traps your opponent controls, and then they're no longer a problem. And uh, here we have our uh, Lightning Storms. I have a couple of those. Uh, because they sort of act as a combination of both of the previous cards. Uh, destroy all attack position monsters your opponent controls, or destroy all their spells and traps. But you can only activate one of these if you control no face-up cards. So if you're going second, you probably don't control anything uh, on your first turn. And therefore, Lightning Storm is a, uh, a great card to have in those situations. Uh, called by the Grave, just to deal with hand traps, you target a monster in your opponent's graveyard and banish it and negate all of that monster's effects. So if your opponent uses an Ash Blossom on you or other hand traps that shall go unnamed, then you can banish that card and negate that effect. And finally, we have Forbidden Droplet, which I run at three because especially in this deck where you might want things in your graveyard, this card is obscene. So you send any number of other cards from your hand or field to the graveyard and choose that many effect monsters your opponent controls and it halves their attack and negates their effects. And this is a quick effect by the way. However, uh, your opponents can't uh, respond to this with card types that are the same types that you sent to the graveyard. So if you discard a monster, your opponent's monsters can't respond to it. If you discard a trap, your opponent's traps can't respond to it, and so on. So the important thing to note though is that because this is a quick play spell, if you activate another spell or something first, and it's in play while it's resolving, you can then use this in response to use that spell that you played first as a, what would you call it, as a, as a cost, as material, quote unquote, for a Forbidden Droplet. And of course, cards and their effects tend to 
you know, they, they remain independently. So even if your first spell is off the field now, its effect will still linger uh, as long as it wasn't like a continuous spell or something. So that is a, uh, a trick, if you will, to get an extra card discarded to Forbidden Droplet's effect. But, but even if you can't do that, even if you are just discarding straight from your hand, this is a great effect to have just to shut off whatever your opponent is trying to do to stop you. And that's why I have three of them. And finally, we have the traps. Infinite Impermanence, which I run at three, because this is a card that realistically could be put into any deck, and it, it would be really good. Uh, it is a trap card, but uh, you can activate it from your hand if you control no other cards. So if you're going second, then you can use it on your opponent's first turn. And what it does is you target a face-up monster your opponent controls and negate its effects. Hey, uh, a great way to stop your opponent from doing silly things. And of course, if you go first, you can set this and activate it on your opponent's turn anyway, so there's not any real reason to not use this card. Uh, also, if this card was set first, then the entire uh, vertical column that it was set in, uh, it negates all spell and trap effects in that column. So, that, that doesn't really come up super often, but sometimes they might have something in this column that you would negate as well and kind of turn this into a two for one that way. Uh, or if they're not paying attention, they'll play something in that column and uh, you get to laugh at them for it. But in either case, infinite impermanence, very, very useful. So uh, yeah, you, you gotta have three of these. And with that, the main deck is complete. So that'll bring us to the extra deck, and we're gonna start with the Infinitrack Goliath, which is a Link 1 monster, which in this version of the deck I run at 2. Now, in previous videos on this same deck, I, I would run 3 Goliaths, because I do think that is the easier way to do it. Uh, Goliath is actually a very important card, and if you have three of them, you can kind of just use them willy-nilly, with only two of them, you do need to put some thought into it sometimes, but you can get away with it as, as long as you know what you're doing. So, it, it has only a thousand attack, that, that's not really the important thing. Uh, I, I, I guess really the main reason you use Infinitrack Goliath is just to send your other Infinitracks to the graveyard because it needs one non-Link Infinitrack monster as its Link material. And, of course, that sends them to the graveyard where they might use their graveyard effects. Uh, but, if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can target one of your Excisee monsters and attach this card to it as material. So it also helps you stack your Excisee monsters, and while it is attached to an Excisee monster, that card can't be destroyed by card effects. So it has defensive purposes as well. It, it does a number of things, it is quite useful. And sometimes you just need that extra thousand attack to get through, it happens. And here we have the double-headed anger knuckle. So this card is really meant to work with your level 10, so I only have one of these. Uh, it needs two machine monsters in order to play. It can't be used as link material, unfortunately, uh, and you can only use one of each of its effects once per turn. During the main phase, as a quick effect, you can send a monster from your hand or field, including this one, to the graveyard to target a level 10 machine in your graveyard and special summon it in defense position. So it brings back your level 10s, maybe you need them for something. And if this card is in your graveyard, you can send a card from your hand or field to the graveyard to special summon it back. So it also, you know, comes back if you, uh, if you really need it to, but the main purpose is just to cheat level 10s into play if you can uh, set it up properly. And here we have the Ancient Gear Ballista, also running one of these. It needs two Earth Machines as material. Luckily, almost every monster in this deck is an Earth Machine. And what it does, this, this is a very important card. When it is Link Summoned, you add an Ancient Gear Monster, or Gear Town, I guess, uh, to your hand. 
The only other Ancient Gear monster is the Ancient Gear box. Which means that because of the Ancient Gear box, you will then add another card to your hand. So this is a huge combo piece that enables all kinds of crazy stuff to happen. Uh, it does also have another effect too, which is occasionally relevant. Target a spell trap you control and a face-up monster your opponent controls. You destroy your card and uh, turn your opponent's monster's attack and defense to zero. Sometimes that is necessary, it enables you to just get through with some big damage, but usually this card is just used to bring a bunch of other things to your hand. And now new to this version of the deck is the Platinum Gadget. Uh, unfortunately this is a light machine, so be aware of that. It needs two machine monsters to play. It can't be used as link material the turn it is link summoned, unfortunately, but during your main phase, special summon a level 4 or lower machine monster from your hand to a zone this card points to. Note that it doesn't negate its effects or anything, so it's a great way to get extra value off of whatever might be in your hand. And it does other stuff with uh, gadget monsters, but there are no other gadget monsters in this deck, so this is largely just used as a extra special summon. And finally, to finish off the extra deck, we have the Excisey monsters, which you have been hearing so much about throughout this uh, video. Now we start off with the rank 4 Heavy Armored Train Iron Wolf. Uh, this card is, I don't use it often, but it can be useful. Uh, 2200 attack is, you know, kinda, kinda big-ish, mid-sized. Once per turn, though, detach an excisey material, and you can target a machine-type monster you control. That card can attack directly this turn, and other monsters, unfortunately, can't attack. Uh, if this card in your possession is destroyed by an opponent's card and sent to the graveyard, add a level 4 machine monster from your deck to your hand. So it does also replace itself, which is kind of cool, but the important thing is that it allows one of your Excisee monsters, including itself, to get an easy attack in on your opponent. And you will see why later. Uh, this right here is the Gear Gigant X. Again, it is a rank 4. This is a combo piece. Once per turn, detach an Excisee material from this card to add a level 4 or lower machine monster from your deck, uh, or graveyard actually, to your hand. And uh, it does other things with gear monsters, but I don't have any other uh, gear monsters. So, yes, what this does though is that it brings your other combo piece monsters to your hand where you can use them for other things. Uh, 2300 attack also isn't necessarily irrelevant, it might get some attacking through. Uh, the Infinitrack River Stormer, however, rank 5, so uh, this is what the Brutal Dozer's for. This is very, very important. Now, all of the uh, Infinitrack Excisee monsters have an effect like uh, if, um, if it destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can attach that monster to this card as material which is surprisingly useful against some decks. It really throws off your opponent's plans if things don't stay in the graveyard and uh, you scoop them up under your Excisee monsters instead. But the main reason you play the River Stormer is that by detaching a material, you add an Earth Machine monster either to your hand or to your graveyard from the deck. So you can set up I don't know, something in your graveyard if you really want it there. Uh, but the important thing that I more often do is add something to hand to, again, allow combos to continue. There's, there's a lot of combos here. And if this card is in your graveyard, I, I think this is another effect that all of the Infinitrax share. You can tribute a Machine Link monster to special summon this card in defense position. Normally, that would not be particularly useful, but remember, if the Infinitrack Goliath is sent to the graveyard, it'll equip itself, it'll attach itself, rather, to an Excisee monster that's in play, so that if you tribute your Goliath, at least this would have one material for immediate use. And next up here, we have the Infinitrack Mountain Smasher at rank 7. This is the one 
that I think I use the least. But it's in the deck and sometimes it's useful. Uh, it has that same first and last effect except this card. Uh, you detach a material and it just permanently gains 1000 attack, which is kind of a lot. So uh, right off the bat you can make it a 3100 attack beater, but if it keeps on scooping up your opponent's monsters, or if you have, um, I don't know, Goliaths, or Heavy Forward or something to add to its material, you can keep on removing stuff in later turns and this can get massive. Which is not a bad thing to have. Uh, the Gigantic Champion Sargus here, this is another new one to the deck at rank 8. Now this does a lot of stuff and it is kind of strange in the way it works. So once per turn, uh, you can also Excisey summon this by using a Springens monster. Okay, well I don't have any Springens Excisey monsters, so that doesn't really matter. Uh, but what it does, just as an effect, is that you add a Therion card from your deck to your hand. So if you can get this into play, then you immediately get a Therion King Regulus for free. Pretty good. And, uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, if material is detached from a monster on the field, except during the damage step, you can target one card on the field and either destroy it or return it to the hand. So, Sargus here doesn't actually remove its own materials, which is weird. But if you have another Excisey monster in play, then you can use this to destroy stuff. So, yeah, a, a strange one it is, but even just getting that free Therion King really makes this worthwhile. Uh, and moving up the ranks here to rank 9, we have the Infinitrack Earth Slicer. Now this card, like I say that other cards are important combo pieces and that is true, but this one is more of a finisher, because you can detach any number of materials from this card and target that many cards on the field and destroy them. If you can get this in play, you can pretty easily destroy at least two cards that your opponent has. So if you didn't get any of your board wipes, this enables you to clear out anything troublesome that is still sitting there uh, stopping you from taking out their life points. And beyond rank 9, we have the big rank 10s, starting with the Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Gustav Max. Uh, yes, two level 10 monsters once per turn, detach material from this card, inflict 2000 damage to your opponent. That is big burn damage. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily stop there. Uh, the number 81 Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Super Dora is another rank 10. Uh, once per turn during either player's turn, detach an Excisey material from this card and target a face-up monster on the field. That target is unaffected by card effects except its own until the end of the turn. So if you have to go first, this is one of the cards you would consider going into. 4000 defense is nigh unbreakable and it can protect itself by its own effect. But it doesn't end there. No, 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 no. Both of those rank 10s are relevant because the Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Juggernaut Liebe exists. Uh, this is a rank 11, but don't worry too much about that because you can Excisey summon this card directly onto a rank 10 Machine Excisey monster uh, and of course transfer all of its materials over to it. This thing starts with 4000 attack, but you can remove a material from it to make it permanently gain 2000 attack and defense, uh, but then your other cards can't attack. But this card, luckily, can attack monsters up to the numbers of material that it has plus one. So, if this only has two material, you can remove one and then it still has one left, which means it can attack twice. If your opponent has a lot of stuff in attack position, you can sometimes pretty easily just mow them all down with this Rail Cannon Juggernaut and do obscene amounts of damage to them, probably taking them out in one turn that way. Uh, otherwise, remember that the Gustav Max does 2,000 damage, and if this pumps itself up to 6,000, that's 8,000 damage right there. So this is your 
Well, I wouldn't say it is the main finisher, but it is definitely one of the main finishers in the deck. And last but certainly not least, the Divine Arsenal AA Zeus Sky Thunder. Uh, this is like a rank 12, but again, that doesn't really matter. Because if an Excisee monster battled this turn, then you can Excisee summon this directly on top of it. Uh, that is why you have that Train Iron Wolf to get easy attacks in. Uh, and then, of course, this becomes kind of trivial to play. Unfortunately, this is a light machine monster, so again, keep that in mind. Uh, but the reason that you would want to play this, even after battling, is that it has a quick effect. By detaching two materials from this card, send all other cards on the field to the graveyard. And uh, if another card you control is destroyed by battle or your opponent's card effect, you can attach one card from your hand, deck, or extra deck to this card as material. So, like I sort of touched upon with the Infinitrack cards, by using Goliaths, or by using Heavy Forward, or even just by using your Infinitrack monster's effects to scoop up your opponent's monsters, you can load Divine Arsenal Zeus with a lot of material to carry, and therefore use its quick effect board wipe multiple times if you have to. So even if you can't finish off your opponent in one turn, if you can play the Divine Arsenal Zeus, then they likely won't be able to uh, deal with it very easily. And that brings me to the end of the deck, but I do have one honorable mention that I would like to make note of. This is the brand new Infinitrack from one of the more, uh, more recent sets, Cyberstorm Access, the Infinitrack Road Roller. It is a level 5, 2100 attack, 2100 defense, and it works in an interesting way. Uh, if an Earth Machine monster is tributed or banished face up, special summon this card from your hand or graveyard. Okay, so it's, it's kind of easy to special summon, uh, but if this is an Excisee monster's uh, material, if it is uh, attached to one, then all of your face-up monsters your opponent controls are A, changed into defense, and also they have their defense lowered by 1000. So this card is okay. I, I would say that this card is actually usable. Uh, at the very least, it gives you something mildly annoying to do on turn one if, uh, again, if you're forced to go first, you can turn all of your opponent's stuff into defense and then at least they can't attack you. Uh, but, yeah, unfortunately it doesn't really fit into any of the combos in this deck. Uh, I have played around with it a bit and oftentimes I found it was just a 2100 attack beater that is kind of easy to play and then it just sort of sits there. But if you wanted to use this card, you could. Uh, I would say you could replace the Crab Crane with this card, and then uh, Outrigger Extension, I guess, would probably have to go too. But then you would use the Road Roller if you really wanted to. Uh, the, the difficulty with this deck is that you've got a lot of high-level monsters, and you don't want to have too many, otherwise it gets really, really bricky. But, yeah... Uh, my, my final verdict on the Infinitrack Road Roller is that it is very much an okay card to use if you really want to. Uh, I don't particularly want to, but uh, it's, it's, it's kind of fun. You could mess around with that and you, it, it wouldn't really hinder your chances at winning. I will say that much. Okay, so... Let's get into some of the combos now, shall we? And we will start with the most basic of basic combos in this deck, uh, which begins by normal summoning an Infinitrack Harvester. So if you normal summon Infinitrack Harvester, you can immediately search your library for a Brutal Dozer. And uh, because the Harvester is just going to be tributed anyway, you would might as well use it as material to Link Summon an Infinitrack Goliath, which you will immediately tribute in order to play the Brutal Dozer. So this comes into play, and it allows you to search your library for an Infinitrack Trencher and Special Summon it right away. 
So your board now has a couple level fives, which again, you can immediately just use to excise summon out your river stormer. And by detaching the Infinitrack Trencher, you can search your library for anything. Uh, for uh, for argument's sake here, let's just say Therion King Regulus. You can yeah search for any Earth machine and add it to your hand. So now this is I would say the end of the most basic combo. This doing this is sort of the meat and potatoes of this deck. This is. You're, you're going to be doing this a lot, so familiarize yourself with these cards. Uh, keep in mind you also have a Harvester and a Trencher in your graveyard, which you can use later. So, building off of what we've started here, we have Therion King Regulus in our hand. We know that we do. So, we can target, say, the uh, Infinitrack Goliath, to special summon Therion King Regulus and equip the Goliath to it. And we can banish our Trencher from the graveyard to special summon our Harvester back. Now, the Harvester has already used one of its effects, but not the other one. So we can target Therion King Regulus. Uh, 8 plus 2 equals 10, make them both level 10s, and sorry if I'm blinding you with the reflection from the Goliath. Make these both level 10s, and then Excise summon out something big, like the uh, Gustav Max here. And because Therion King Regulus went away, this Goliath will also go away, but, and this is really cool, uh, it doesn't need to be a monster, per se, in order for its effect to activate. It was still sent to the graveyard, so you can right away just uh, equip it, or attach it rather, to the Super Dreadnought right here. And you can use the Super Dreadnought's effect to uh, remove one of these, uh, either one, it doesn't really matter at this point, to do 2,000 direct damage right there, and then Excise summon the Rail Cannon Juggernaut Liba on top of it, and remove another card uh, to activate its effect. So you did 2,000 damage with the Gustav Max. This thing now has 6,000 attack. Uh, assuming your opponent has nothing in play, you can attack them for the win right here. Now, is this combo perfect? No. <laughs> like I said, this only works if your opponent has nothing to stop you. Uh, and no monsters at all to stop this from doing damage. But if you can wipe the board somehow, then this is the easiest way to get 8,000 damage in in one turn. However, that is not the only way to do 8,000 damage in one turn. Uh, we can also do it by starting with Machina Redeployment. Now this combo is a bit more involved, but it works just as well. So you discard one card in your hand, it doesn't really matter what it is, and you add a couple Machinas to your hand instead. Uh, one of them being the Gear Frame, the other one uh, being the Machina Fortress, if I can find it. So this is now in your hand, and you normal summon the Gear Frame, which will bring the Machina Unclaspare to your hand, special summons itself to its own effect, and then adds Machina Citadel to your graveyard, where you might just want it for later. So you've now got two level fours in play, and you'd might as well just excise summon out the Gear Gigant X. And you can immediately use its effect, uh, detaching the Machina Gear Frame, this is difficult to do in gloves, uh, so that you can add from your deck to your hand, a level 4 or lower machine, like the Infinitrack Harvester. So now your hand looks something like this. And because of the weird way that Machina Fortress works, you can discard itself as well as the Harvester to special summon Machina Fortress. So you've got a couple, you know, pretty good sized uh, machines in play here, but we want to build even bigger. So we're going to use both of them as link material to play the Ancient Gear Ballista, which will add, from your deck to your hand, the Ancient Gear Box, 
which will add from your deck to your hand the Infinitrack Trencher because it has exactly 500 attack. And uh, if you would look right here, you now have 5 plus 4 is 9 levels worth of machines in your hand, so you can discard them to special summon your Machina Fortress again. And uh, take note of this, because this is a really handy way to get both an Infinitrack Trencher and an Infinitrack Harvester into your graveyard at the same time. Uh, because what you can do now is banish your Trencher to special summon your Harvester, and now things are going to play out with that uh, basic combo that we just spoke about last time. You can add a uh, Infinitrack Brutal Dozer to your hand, you can add a... Uh, hang on, you can special summon that Brutal Dozer by tributing your Ballista to special summon the Infinitrack Tunneler. Yeah, I got ahead of myself a bit there. And you can use these to Hixizi summon out the Infinitrack River Stormer sending the Tunneler to the graveyard, because uh, it also has a graveyard effect, you can add Therion King Regulus to your hand, which you can also special summon uh, by targeting the Machina gear frame, actually. Because here's, here's another really clever thing that you can do. Uh, the gear frame, being a union monster, can not only equip itself to monsters, it can unequip itself too. So, it doesn't have to equip itself by its own effect to unequip itself, so because it is now equipped to Therion King Regulus, it can also unequip itself, and I have run out of room, it can unequip itself to form a new monster. And, uh, well, you've got this Harvester sitting here in defense mode, so you can target Machina Fortress, maybe, to make them both into level 7 plus 2 is 9, and Excisey summon out an Infinitrack Earth Slicer. And now we can make a bit more room with everything we've got. And uh, yeah, you can remove pretty much whatever your opponent has simply by unattaching the Earth Slicer's materials. And now hopefully you have cleared a path for what is far more than 8,000 attack points worth of damage to go through and uh, OTK your opponent this way. Uh, remember, we started with one card and uh, yeah, we built all of this simply off of that. Now, this brings me to the final combo that I wanted to explain in this video. Uh, in fact, this is a combo that features cards that are both new to this deck and cards that weren't even printed when I made my previous videos. So this is something completely new. It is, believe it or not, a combo for going first. Yep, you heard me right. Uh, with this combo, you could conceivably go first and you wouldn't immediately get laughed out of whatever duel you're in. So all you need in your opening hand is a Machina redeployment, and an Infinitrack Harvester, or some way to get an Infinitrack Harvester, like a uh, Heavy Forward, perhaps. So if you've got these two cards in your opening hand, you could do this whole thing. Uh, I know that by Yu-Gi-Oh! standards, that makes this combo inconsistent trash. It does require two cards, after all. But even if you can only do parts of this combo, it's still better than nothing, right? So uh, yeah, let's let's get into it. Now we start off with the Machina redeployment. We uh, use this, we discard whatever, it doesn't really matter, and we bring to our hand the Machina gear frame and the Machina citadel. Yet yeah, we're doing it differently this time. And with the two of these now in hand, we can play the Machina gear frame, which will bring Machina Unclassbare to our hand and immediately special summon itself. And the Machina Unclassbare will send the Machina Fortress to the graveyard. So uh, yeah, we're, we're kind of reversing the roles of the Citadel and Fortress. But now we can do what you might expect, and we bring out the Gear Gigant X, and we immediately detach the Machina gear frame, and we're bringing to our hand the Infinitrack Anchor Drill. Yes, this is, uh, again, something different. Now, because Machina Citadel is at level 10 already, 
That is the only card that we need to discard in order to special summon Machina Fortress from the graveyard. And with these two cards in play, we can once again special summon Ancient Gear Ballista. Uh, I bet you're sensing some more patterns here in these combos. And the Ancient Gear Ballista will add to your hand the Ancient Gear Box, and the Ancient Gear Box will add, you guessed it, the Infinitrack Trencher. So now, our hand looks a little something like this. Remember, we are assuming we already have a Harvester in hand. So what we do now, because we have this Fortress in the Graveyard, we are going to discard the Anchor Drill and the Trencher. We're keeping that Harvester in hand for the time being. And we will Special Summon the, uh, the Machina Fortress. There we go. And now that we've got the Trencher in the Graveyard, we can banish it to Special Summon... I've got two cards here. To Special Summon the Infinitrack Anchor Drill, which will also Special Summon the Gearbox from your hand. So now you've got a level 4, and you've got a level 4. Uh, you can add them together with the Anchor Drill's effect to make a level 8. And we can stack them together to form the Gigantic Champion Sargus, who comes into play like so. Now, Gigantic Champion Sargus can add a Therion card to your hand, but it doesn't have to be the Therion King. Uh, you can instead add the Disc Coliseum to your hand for a bit of extra value, and uh, we can activate it and just throw it over here somewhere, because it'll sit there for the rest of the combo, and when it is activated, then you add Therion King Regulus to your hand, which you can immediately special summon. And uh, equip the Machina Gear Frame to it. And with this, we can unequip the Machina Gear Frame due to its own union effect, and use these two cards right here, the Gear Frame and the Ancient Gear Ballista, to special summon something new. It is the Platinum Gadget, and this is why I added Platinum Gadget to the deck, because now we can use it to special summon the Infinitrack Harvester, which will add to our hand the Infinitrack Brutal Dozer. So we can sacrifice, say, the uh, Machina Fortress, maybe, to special summon the Brutal Dozer. Now, remember, Platinum Gadget is a light machine monster, but because we special summoned it before we special summoned the Dozer, uh, that doesn't matter. We can still carry on as normal. So the Brutal Dozer will come into play, and it'll search for the Infinitrack Tunneler, uh, which will go barely in the shot over here. Uh, we've, we've filled up every monster zone we have. And uh, well, I guess technically then this one should be over here somewhere. Whatever, you, you get the idea. My, my space is limited. So now we've got these two level fives. Uh, why don't we just stack them together to create the rank five Infinitrack River Stormer? And by uh, detaching the Tunneler, because the Tunneler has this cool uh, graveyard effect, we can search our library for a big level 10, like the heavy freight train Derek Rain. Uh, again, this light machine monster here uh, kind of prevents you from using the bullet train, but the heavy freight train you can make work instead. Uh, all you have to do is uh, use this River Stormer as material to special summon another Earth Machine like the uh, like the Goliath, and then the Derek Rain comes with it. So now your board looks a little something like this, and you will note you have a level eight here, and you have a level two here. Add them together to make level ten, but you have another level ten already, so you don't need to use this now level ten Therion King Regulus as a. Uh, Excisey material. Oh, no, no, no. You can just use these two level 10s right here to create the uh, number 81 Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Super Dora and put it in defense right over this way. So now we've got a pretty good looking board, really. But believe it or not, it doesn't end there. there there's still more steps to this. Uh, you see, we can't use this Platinum Gadget as Link material, which is unfortunate, but what we can do is use the Infinitrack River Stormer's second or third uh, bottom effect, there we go, to 
Just send that to the graveyard and add the Infinitrack River Stormer to play. And now we've got this extra Goliath, we've got this River Stormer who's not gonna do much of anything, so we might as well use them as Link material to special summon the Double-Headed Anger Knuckle, and then this Platinum, uh, or not Platinum gadget, the uh, Infinitrack Goliath, its effect will go off, and we can just tuck it under the Super Dreadnought. So this is what the final board should look like. And uh, yeah, it's it's kind of impressive, really. We've got, for one thing, the Disc Coliseum to provide a bit of uh, protection from battle. We have the Super Dora, which can activate its effect as a quick effect to um, prevent something from being affected by an effect. However, one of the cards that's attached to it is the Heavy Freight Train, and when that is unattached, you get to destroy something. So you have a quick effect destroy right here. But that's not all, because when you remove something from an Excisey monster, Gigantic Champion Sargus uh, goes off as well, and you can destroy something else, or return something to the hand. So that is a second destruction effect on your opponent's turn. And on top of that, you also have the Therion King Regulus sitting out here to the side, who can negate any sort of effect that you want by tributing it. And if all else goes wrong, if you are really stuck, and somehow all your stuff gets destroyed, you still have the Machina Citadel in your graveyard, ready to make a comeback and possibly wipe the field. You have all kinds of answers here, and all it took was those two cards in your opening hand to make this a possibility. And there you have it, that has been my exhaustively comprehensive guide to my 2024 Earth Machine deck, as it currently stands right now. Uh, is it open to change? Yes, of course it is. Maybe something new will be released that I never could have imagined. Uh, let me tell you, Therion King Regulus being released was a game changer for this deck, and now I couldn't play it any other way. Uh, but for now, this will bring me to the end of this video, and I do hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you found it just a little bit educational. And uh, if you did, then please leave a like, a comment, subscribe, and I hope that you'll join me again next time for whatever deck I might be profiling next. Till then, ta-ta! There it is! There it is! Well, I asked for an ancient copper dragon, didn't I? Oh, oh, what, 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 what? No, no! This is the card I was looking for! Oh, thank goodness! That is wild! That is absolutely wild! Prada Plant, Therion Ball, Backup Team, ha 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 ha! Oh, yes!